All right, thank you very much, um, Anthony. It's good to be here. Thanks for inviting me to this, um, your session today. Um, I think it's a great thing to to have this kind of sessions um, because, as I always tell people, that when I was coming, when I was starting out as a designer, um, that was about 20 years ago now, because I started out in 2004, and um, it was, we didn't have forums like this where designers could meet, creatives could meet and discuss ideas um, and discuss um, and, and have people talk to us, people that were more experienced. Um, it, it, it never happened. So we, we had to find out things by trial and error, which is not a very good way to find out things. It's a, a lot of time is wasted. A lot of emotions are hurt. Um, a lot of monies and resources can be wasted in that if you do things try and error. And um, for me, starting out that early, there was a lot of try and error. So there are a lot of mistakes that I made in the early part of my career. And But the truth of the matter is that those mistakes have helped me to be able to um, advise designers now and talk to them and um, guide and direct people. So for those who don't know me, my name is um, Tola Alabi. Um, you can call me TA. I am a designer, I'm a creative, and I'm a teacher. Um, I mentor young creatives about design, business, life, relationships, and I have a podcast called Pro Masterclass where I share my thoughts on life as it regards your work, your relationship, your spirituality, and um, just generally my thoughts on on issues so for any of you who haven't listened to my podcast it's called pro masterclass on spotify um if you just type out tola labi i think you'd come up with my um in my podcast so thank you very much once again anthony for giving the opportunity to talk um with your audience and um i like i, I like the theme of um your program which is um you're talking about starting out how to start, and it's very important because how you start is very important. It's the foundation of whatever career we have. Is how you start. How you start a lot of time determines how far you get. And um, you, you know, you, you gave me this topic to talk on, which is uh, managing criticism as a designer. Criticism as a designer, how to manage it. And I think it's a great topic. I don't think I've ever spoken on this um, on any webinar or seminar before. So I found it pretty interesting. And I think it's important for you guys to um, to know about criticism and how to manage it. Um, I think, first of all, we must be able to draw a distinction between this thing called criticism and critiques there's a big difference they sound the same but there's a difference the difference between what we call criticism and critiques so um i realized that knowing the difference is like knowing the difference between night and day because one is actually very important to your growth as a designer as a creative as a professional and one is very detrimental to whether you are going to continue as a designer or whether you are going to give up altogether. These two words, criticism and critiques, a lot of times we confuse them. And I'm going to try my best right now to explain the difference. Criticism is what people do. It's an act of tearing down something. It's, a, it's an act of looking for the negative and dwelling on the negative and pointing out the negative. That's what criticism is. When you look at something and you look at everything bad about it and you ridicule everything bad about it, you point out, you shame it, and you end there. That is a criticism, you understand? And critical people criticize 
you understand? So the person that gets involved in criticism is called a critical person. So when they look at something, it is the bad things they see. And that is what they dwell on. Now, a critique, on the other hand, when something is being critiqued, is when you look at something and you look at it objectively. You look at the good, look at the shortcomings, look at the bad. And you are able to praise the good and try to correct the bad. That is called a critique. So you look at something holistically and you look at the good side of it. And then you look deeply and see if there's a bad side to it or a faulty side to it. And then you are able to praise the good and you are able to advise and guide on how to improve on those things that are not well thought out. That's called a critique. A person that critiques is called a critic. A person that criticizes is called a critical person. Do you understand? So um, it's very important for us to know the difference between these two words. Because when you know the difference between these two words, you will know what to avoid and what to embrace. Because the truth of the matter, with the topic, how to manage criticism as a designer, why I would correct that topic is because, because it can destroy your career, it can destroy your esteem, it can destroy your motivation to work. You must avoid critical people. You don't manage them. The way to manage critical people is to avoid them. Because criticism is a very weighty thing that eats on your mind and can, have, can have, um, affect the way you view yourself, your self-worth, and your self-esteem. And I tell people, one of the biggest assets you have as a human being is your self-esteem. If anything or anyone is trampling on your self-esteem, you want to do away with them. Your self-esteem is your biggest asset. So I tell people when they come to me for advice and they talk about their work and say, ah, my, my boss is trampling on my self-esteem. I'm in a relationship. It's affecting my self-esteem. Look, I tell them, you better move away from that place because your self-esteem is the core of who you are. So when somebody is critical around you, you want to avoid that critical person, that critical energy. You don't want it. You don't, that, there's no other way of managing it. You don't manage it. You avoid it. You cancel it. However, when it comes to critiques, you're meant to embrace it. Critiques can help us grow as designers, as creatives. When you have um, somebody critiquing your work, it's actually essential. It's not even optional. You understand? A critique for anybody in the creative industry or outside the creative industry is, is very important. You know, I studied architecture in school for my undergraduates in Obafemi Aulo University. And we used to have something called jury. So whenever they give us a project to design something, we'll design. You can give us one month, two months, a couple of weeks. And then after that, we have something called a jury where you paste your work and your lecturers and your colleagues will gather around your work and begin to look at your work and ask you questions. Those were critics. They will look at it and say, why is your door this way? Why is the size of your window this way? Why did you use this kind of roof? Are you sure this roof can work? You see, it was very important that we were critiqued. My wife is a medical doctor. She always talks about when she was in medical school too, and then they will go for their ward rounds in the hospital in which they are doing their housemanship or whatever it is, and the doctor will ask them questions about a patient and stuff and critique what their analysis of that patient is. It's very important. Everybody does it. It's very important. There's no way you can grow in a career if you do not have a critique. Do you understand? Critiquing is very important. It's highly important. It's necessary for you to critique. Now, the truth of it is that there are two phases to critique, two phases, which is important that we all have. And for those people, you see, I have a design um, academy where I teach logo design. Um, it's called PMA. 
and I take different cohorts on, but my first, my first class, I always tell them, what I want you to leave with at the end of this class or at the end of this training is an ability to self-critique. That's the first phase of critiquing, is self-critiquing. You must be able to self-critique. And that's one thing I realized that a lot of designers don't know how to do. You don't have the ability to look at your work and tell yourself, I've done a good work. To so say, Abiodo, I've done a good work. Or IB, I've done a good work. Or Anthony, say, I've done a good work. You know, for you to look at yourself and say, I have done a good work. Very important. Self-critiquing, very important. Probably the biggest foundation of it all is your ability to self-critique, to look at your work and say it's good. A lot of designers don't have that. We've not been taught an ability to look at the work and be honest with yourself and say, I didn't try. I tried here, but I didn't try here. A lot of designers don't know how to self-critique. And if you can't self-critique, what will happen is that people will manipulate you and take advantage of you. If you cannot self-critique, you see, people will look at what you have and they'll realize that you don't know whether it's good or not. And they'll tell you, some people will tell you, it's not that good, sure, I'll manage it, but I'm not that good. And you, you believe it. And because they've said that, you have a problem charging for it. So you feel like they're doing you a favor and then they'll pay you anything. You understand? So there are some people that, from doing business, I realize some people are very highly manipulative when they see your work, first of all, they like it in private. They say, ah, man, this work is good. But if you tell him, ah, the guy, will, the guy won't charge, you want to charge us too much. Oh. So though they say, I've seen your portfolio, you're trying, but you know, we can help you to get some experience. Let's just help you. We just want to help you to get some experience, you know, so that your hand can be strong in design. And then because you don't, you yourself don't know how good you are, you just say, ah, okay, well, let them help me. So, so, so we'll just help you with 5,000 naira. You know, you're just coming up that kind of thing. So because you don't know how good you are, so they will manipulate you. Some people who are not going to manipulate you, but they will confuse you. And what they mean is that those people, they are not really trying to tell you your work is bad. They actually think your work is bad because they are not exposed to good work. So they'll tell you, ah, uh -uh, you don't have enough color here now. You don't have enough fonts. If you put more colors in this, your stuff, put more fonts, make it bigger. You understand? Put more animation in your logo. You understand? Put drop shadow there. They're telling you because they're not exposed people. But because you yourself are not sure, you can't self-critique to see whether your work is good or not. You can't stand and say, no, no, I can't do that. It will spoil this work. And this work is good as it is already. You understand? So your inability to self-critique would always affect whether you get manipulated or confused going forward. Self-critiquing is very important. To be able to look at your work and say it is good. Now, why even when we read the Bible, in Genesis, God created the world. And as he created everything, he looked at his work. And what did he say? It is good. He didn't need the permission of angels around him to tell him whether it was good or not. He self-critiqued his work and said it is good. He self-critiqued and looked at man and said it is not good for man too. He looked at it himself. He didn't need outside advice. And God gave each and every one of us that capability to look at our work and say whether it is good, bad, or average. If there's one thing you're going to learn as a designer is how to look at your product and accurately judge it. I can't tell you how many times that I've looked at something and I'm sure it is good. And I tell somebody that this thing is good. And they come, they, they'll be attacked. They'll tell me, ah, no, no, no. It's not, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not so good. Um, and we don't like it. We don't like it. And I will stand on what I know is good. And do you know what? After two, two weeks, two months, sometimes even two years, the person will come back and say, you are right. Oh, that thing is actually good. We like it now. It still happened very recently. I was doing something and I was sure it was good. This was about two years ago. And my wife told me, this thing is not so good. And I told her, this thing is good. I said, it's not so good. And I looked at it, I said, ah, it is one I know how to self-critique. If I'm not sure, I'll tell you I'm not sure. But this thing I'm sure is good. I said, it's not good. And just 
last week, this was two years later, she came back and said, this thing is actually really good. And I said, remember you were telling me it was not good two years ago. And I said, yeah, I don't know, maybe because I wasn't so exposed in it then. You see, if I didn't have the ability to self-critique, I would have stopped that thing. I would have stopped it. I would have changed it. I would have been insecure about it. But the ability to self-critique is very important. That is what helps you to be able to not get manipulated and confused. You see, I meet a lot of designers that send me their work. I say, I send this thing to my client, and my client said they don't like it, but I think it's good, but they say they don't like it. So what do you think? And what I tell them, what does it matter what I think? It doesn't matter what I think. If I tell you it's good, do you want me to call your client and tell your client it's good? If I tell you it's good and you don't believe it's good, when you can't get through to me next time, how will you know whether it's good or not? I ask them, what do you think? They say, I think, I think it's good. So I go and tell your client that and tell them why you think it's good. A lot of designers don't know how to do that. You understand? So you get bossed around and thrown around with clients that unnecessarily criticize your work. But because you have been able to self-critique, you wouldn't get swayed very easily. So that's the first phase of critiquing. It is self-critique. Very self-critiquing. Very important that you learn how to self-critique. And you can only learn how to self-critique if you know the principles of the work you are doing. So a lot of people in the design industry have a problem self-critiquing because their, their design education is faulty. And that's why it's good to have formal design education. No matter how naturally skilled you are, having a formal education allows you to articulate the principles. What education does, it helps you to know the why to the what. Sometimes talent just makes you know the what. I know how to draw. So it's a, it's a, it is a natural talent. I've been drawing since I was very small. But then when you have an education in art, the, your education will let you know why you are shading. What does shading do? Shading gives a feeling of depth to a drawing. On a good day, if you're not educated, you can't explain what shading is. Just say, then shading makes it fine. What does that mean? But when you want to talk articulately, because you're educated, you say, why do you shade? You say, because shading gives a drawing, a flat drawing, a sense of depth. Do you understand? So it's because a lot of designers don't have formal education. What they do, how they learned design was trying, they just got the software and started using it. Do you understand? Or just went to, you know, well, we were just trying out things and looking at people doing it and stuff like that. You don't have formal education. And it's very important for us to have formal education. Formal education doesn't mean go to university. Formal education just means learn under somebody that knows what they are doing and ask them questions and take down notes. That's what the formal education is. It might be going to a two-week um, training, although I don't believe all, in all these short trainings that we do, all these crash courses, I don't believe it, but go for one, go for, go for a training. Let someone actually give you a certificate, let someone enroll in something. Don't just say, I learned on YouTube. You understand? Those things build insecurity after time. It's good, though. You can learn on YouTube. YouTube is amazing. I still learn incredible things on YouTube. But the problem with YouTube is that when you enter in a room of professionals, it wouldn't be enough to say, I learned on YouTube. It wouldn't be enough. You will feel insecure. You understand? So, so you need to, even if you have natural, natural mm -hmm. abilities, get a teacher, a mentor, sign up. Look, eh, you know what? Eh? I told you, I have a design academy. You'll be surprised the people that have signed up for my design academy. Some of them, designers that have experience, as in they've been doing it for 10 years. One of them signed up the other time and asked this guy, because I know he designs well. He's good. I respect his work. I said, why did you sign up for this thing? He said, because, you know what? When I learned, I learned on the streets. And I don't feel it's accurate enough for me to say I learned on the streets. I want to hear someone talk about it professionally. So I can know what to, how to talk about my work professionally. And I respected that. You understand? He knew the what, but he wanted to be able to articulate the why. That's what an education does for you. 
You understand? So it helps you to be able to self-critique because when you look at your work, you can weigh your work against the principles. So what you can look at, when someone says your work is bad, you can now go and bring out the principles of design. Bad. Why is it bad? Does it have balance? Balance is there. Does it have respect scale? The respect scale. Proportion? Proportion is right. Contrast is there. Use of color works well. Hierarchy works well. Everything is checked. What is bad about it? You see, that's how you can self-critique. But if you don't have an education, you have nothing to weigh your work beside. So you just have a belief that it's good. But by what standard is it good? You understand? But that's how you can shut people up when they tell you your work is terrible. Point out what is bad there. Tell me what is bad. And wait against the principles of design. Because there are principles of design. It's just like if someone tells you, if you design something, and say it's a chair, and someone tells you this is not a chair. First of all, how, how do you settle such an argument when someone has designed something, calls it a chair, and somebody else says it's not a chair? How do you? You must go back to the principles of what makes a chair. Number one principle, you all know. Can you sit down on it? You can sit down on it. Point one for you. Do you understand? Is it steady? Is it steady? Is steady. Point two for you. Is it comfortable? Yes, it's comfortable. It's not comfortable, but you now have to think, does a chair have to be comfortable depending on the function? Do you understand what I'm saying? Then you can start looking at other smaller, smaller things that make a chair, but you must have principles that guide what a chair is. You can't just believe it's a chair. If you just believe, then someone can also come and believe it's not a chair. Then two beliefs start arguing because there are no facts, only belief. It is fact that makes belief substantial at the end of the day. So you must have facts about your design work. How many of you know the facts of design, of logo design? Is it legible? Is it scalable? Does it work in one color? Do you understand? Those are kind of things you cannot ask. You understand? Does it have brand personality? Those are the things you cannot ask. It's not just I like it, I don't like it. No, 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 not, not those things. You know. So crit critique, critiquing, self critiquing is important, but self critiquing can only happen when you understand the principles, and you can only understand the principles when you learn somewhat formally from an authority. And this way, having an authority in your life as a professional is very important. As a design professional or someone that aspires to be a professional, have an authority. You don't need too many. You need just one. One. At most, two. But I, one, one is okay. Look for somebody whose work is good. Contact them and tell them, I want you to be the authority I am following. You be an authority so that... You can look at my work and critique my work for me based on your experience. Very important. So there are two opinions that matter when your work is being critiqued. Number one opinion is your opinion of your own work, self-critiquing. But your self-critiquing is based on an education that you get from a bigger person or a more experienced person who has approved your work and say you are good enough to go to the market. That's where apprenticeship is very important. And because a lot of designers don't have, go through apprenticeship, they just teach themselves and, and approve themselves and then they go to the streets. That's why they get battered. That's why they get cheated. You understand? Because in the end, you don't have any confidence. Because there is no master, no authority somewhere that has told you you are good enough to go to the streets. You see, when I, I studied in Canada and when I went to school in Canada, I had this lecturer. His name is Dave Robinson. Now, he taught me Photoshop. He was the one that taught me how to use Photoshop. He taught me some other software like Macromedia Flash, but Photoshop is was the main thing he taught the class. And he liked me a lot because my work was good. So when I decided to come back to Nigeria, you see, when I was in Canada, I used to work for clients. And whenever I get stuck, I would go to Dave. And they would tell me what to do. They would tell me, no, no, change this, change this. This is too busy. Reduce this, reduce that. And I would do that. 
And um, when I was coming back to Nigeria, I was scared. Not because of coming back to Nigeria, but I was scared because Dave was not coming back to Nigeria with me. How I remember then there was no like cell phone or anything, everything was email and stuff. So I was like, ah oh, man, how will I go to Dave's office to show him this work? How like because every time I did work, I'll go to his office in the school and I'll show him. So when I was coming back to Nigeria, I was like, ah, who will be looking at my work now? So I called Dave. And so when I go back to Nigeria, every time I did a job, I'll email it to Dave and he'll look at it and say it's good enough. He'll look at it and say it's good enough. After the third time when I got back to him, he sent me an email and said, Tola, you are good enough. You are good enough to work with anybody. You don't need my approval. You see, that was him telling me I was good enough. With him telling me that my confidence just went up. Because it was my master in design that was telling me I'm good enough. So if my master in design has told me I'm good enough, who should I be? Who can I be scared of? You understand? Nobody to be scared of. It's like, so that's why it's important for you guys to have somebody that is an authority. Because some clients will come and they will intimidate you. It is when you now believe you know who who your master is. I say, hey, who are you compared to the person I'm coming from? If that person feels I'm good enough, you cannot tell me I'm not good enough. That's when crit criticism will not work on you because your master has critiqued you and has counted you worthy. So it's very important that you are able to self-critic, have an education and have a mentor or a master that can look at you and tell you you are ready to work. That's how to start. That's how to start out in design, in this industry called design. But a lot of designers have a, they, they, they battle with a lot of things when it comes to um, their self-esteem and putting themselves in a position where they are always being criticized. Now, one of the things that they battle with that puts them in that position of being criticized is as I said, you don't know how to self-critique. I think number two, and most importantly, is the fact that when, instead of showing their work to a, an expert, a mentor, what I realized happens nowadays in these days of WhatsApp group and Telegram groups, what people do right now is that they show their work to a Telegram group. Telegram group. And that Telegram group, he said, please, I'm working on this project. Can you guys help me choose between A and B? And some, some people, 20 people will say A. 25 people will say B. Do you understand? I'm like, that's a terrible thing. I don't know why designers do that thing, but it's very, very unethical, unprofessional, and a very insecure thing for a designer to do, to go to a mass audience, to ask them, to approve your work. You are putting yourself in the line of criticism by doing that. Going to a mass audience. Some people won't, they are so bad that they go to like five WhatsApp groups sharing one work and asking them, please guys, can you help me choose? Can you help me look at this work? Your feedback is, is welcome. Why is their feedback welcome? The WhatsApp group of 150 people, 200 people, and you want them to look at one work and you want to get direction from that? No. No, that's not how. Remember, two most important people, you and your mentor, when it comes to critiquing your work. Let it be you and your mentor, not your WhatsApp group of designers. You get confused by doing that, taking your work to your WhatsApp group and telling them to check your work. That's when people will criticize. People criticize. That's why people tell you, um, what's the name of this group? Um, Niger Graphic Designer on WhatsApp is, is, is toxic. Why is it toxic? It's not toxic. You are the one that took your work there for a, a, one of the biggest Facebook groups on in, in Nigerian Facebook groups of designer in Nigeria, in Nigeria, the biggest. You went to go and put your work there for them to criticize your work. How can you how, how can you get any constructive feedback from a group that has thousands of people? Why would you put your work there? Do you understand why? You get feedback, of course, you get criticism. You get people that will tear down your work. And there are three reasons why you get criticisms from showing your work to a lot of people. Number one reason why you show your work, why, why, you, why you get criticism from, a lot of, from showing your work to a lot of people 
It's because when you show your work to a lot of people, you meet three types of people. You meet the inexperienced, you meet the jealous, and you meet the unhappy. The inexperienced, the jealous, and the unhappy. That is why people feel Ninja Graphic Designers Group on Facebook is toxic. It is not toxic. They have quality content. They have quality competitions, quality challenges. I like it. I follow them. Good. The problem is people that put up their work on Ninja Graphic Designers for people to critique. If that is not a critique. That is putting yourself up for criticism. Because in that group, you have the inexperienced people. People that just started graphic design yesterday, two weeks ago, they are also there typing their opinion on your work. Why? You've been designing for two, three, four, five years. Someone that started designing last week is also telling you, I don't think this your font is okay. He will join them in writing the, that. Inexperienced. Some of them have never designed anything in their life before. Some of them are living in a corner of a village. They've not seen a good logo before in their life. But they will, they would, they will comment. You understand? They will comment on your work. On that, their phone, they will comment. The inexperienced. That's why you should never show your work to a mass audience of people. The second people you will meet are the jealous. There are some people, and this is the reality, some people will criticize you not because your work is bad, but actually because your work is good, but you are moving ahead of them. So you started doing design together, but they realize that you are getting better than them. You tell them, ah, what do you think about this thing? Their heart is like, ah, I be that I started this work with. In fact, I started one week before him. He was the one telling me, I'm the one that gave him Photoshop to install on his, on his system. And look at what he's doing now. And he had the ghost come and ask me, whether the work is good. I can't tell him the work is good. I tell him, it's okay, Jerry, not, not that good. Those people are there on those massive groups that, that you show your work to. They are jealous of your work. It's jealous, en jealousy, envy. They will never tell you anything good about your work until they catch up with you. They want you guys to move on the same pace. So if they can slow you down by discouraging you, they will discourage you. The envious, they are there. They don't write it on their forehead, but they are there. They are right there, criticizing your work too. It is not that your work is bad, but you are just moving too fast for them. The third category of people are the unhappy. These people they are not inexperienced, they are not particularly jealous, they are just sadistic. They don't know how to, do, to see the sun if the sun is right in front of them. All they see is darkness. All they think is how things are not good. They can't help themselves. Not like they don't like you. That's the way they see the world. Everybody is ugly. Everything is bad. Nothing is good. So when you show your work, that's what they will see. Ugly, bad, not good. They can't help themselves. If you ask them seriously, they'll look at it and they will always see something ugly, bad about it. They will never see the good. They're just inherently sad people. They're there. There are very many on this platform called X. There are too many there. Sadistic people. Sadistic. It was hard for me to adjust to X because there are too many sadistic, especially in that creative industry. Their mouth was too bad. And I just thought, ah, who is this person? Do you understand? Why, 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 why are you so toxic? Why, 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 why are you so caustic in your words about somebody's work? When, when a new company launches their, their logo, they will just say something bad about it because they are unhappy. They are unhappy with their life. That unhappiness has been with them from childhood. It's not about you. It's just that they don't like your work. They don't like, they don't like life. And someone that doesn't like their life, how can they like your work? So when you put your work to a mass audience, be ready for the inexperienced, the jealous and envious, and the sadistic and unhappy people. And those people will criticize your work. And imagine if you have all these people talking about your work. It's enough for you to give up doing design. And that's why 
we must go in the direction I felt I talked about earlier. We must be able to self-critic. We must be able to have an education so that you can know the principles and be guided by the principles, not the emotions of other people. And then you must have a mentor. A mentor that's gone ahead of you, that is better than you, and can tell you you are ready. But no matter what anybody tells you, you are good. You see, I have a mentoring club, and that's what I try to do with my mentees. Number one is to build their confidence. People that join my mentoring club, they know now that I don't, first of all, is to build your confidence, your esteem. Once I can build that your esteem, your work will improve automatically. It's your esteem that improves your work. You understand? Your esteem that improves your work. Look, a lot of people have this mentality that they lack confidence because they've been criticized too much. So they tell you they lack confidence because people have criticized them too much. But it's not true. People criticize them too much because they lack confidence. So I'll say that again. A lot of people think they lack confidence because they've been criticized too much. But in reality, they are criticized too much because they lack confidence. So when you lack confidence, you are a punching bag for people. People will take out their emotions on you. That's when the unhappy will take out their emotions on you. Do you understand? The unhappy will take, take out their emotions on you. Um, the jealous will take out their emotions on you. And the inexperienced will take out their emotions on you. But when you have confidence, there are some things that you wouldn't stand for. You will know, number one, that you know the principles enough to self-critique your work and to say whether your work is good enough. You will know, number two, that you have a, a, a mentor that has looked at your work and tells you you are good enough. And based on your respect for your mentor, that guides you. And that gives you the confidence to go ahead. So in summary, what I want to say tonight is criticism is not something that should be managed. It's something that should be avoided. And you can avoid it, number one, by not taking validation from too many people. Not from a WhatsApp group, not from a Telegram group, not from people that follow you on your social media page. Those people can lie to you. You can lie. You understand? That's not where you get your validation from. Your validation should come your validation should come from your awareness of yourself. So let your awareness of yourself always guide you to what you should be doing and how you should be doing it. All right, so I don't know if anybody has any questions. I think we have just about 15 minutes more for this. So thank you very much for giving the opportunity to talk on this on this. Um, I thank you I think, uh, for the opportunity to answer me. I think I can take a few questions before before Google Meet throws us out. OK, sir. Sorry, I actually have a personal question I want to ask. So. You know, you mentioned something, um, you actually, you have already said a lot actually, and I've started thinking about my my life actually as a designer. And the question is, my question is, um, how how did you get to know, like, okay, how did you get to be convinced that, okay, I want to be a designer, this is what I want to do, I'm going to give myself wholly to it. You know, I just want to know how how were you sure that you you like you really really wanted to do this and you st stick to it till now? Because I've seen that it's been so many years and you're still consistent in it. So, like, how were you able to make that decision? Like, how were you able to come to the conclusion that yes, I really I love what I'm doing. I this is what I want to do. Yes, sir. How, that's my question. Sir. All right, so how, how did I know I wanted to do design? How did I know this is the path I want to go down? Okay, so I'll answer that question. Number one, I know the much I know, uh, um, Anthony, is that what I know is that I want to do design today. I don't know whether I want to do design tomorrow, and I don't bother myself with that. The problem is that a lot of us, we bother ourselves with something we can commit ourselves to for the rest of our lives. That's too much of a burden. And that's why we don't commit ourselves to, well, ah, am I going to do this thing for the rest of my life? No, that's not, that's not important. What is important is something you want to do today. 
Mm. And by the time you do it today, 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 by the time you look back, you realize that you've amassed like thousands of days of today. Do you understand what I'm saying? I never ever thought I would be doing design for 20 years. I didn't think so. I just thought that at that point, I would pick my interest. I wanted to do it. So I, I'm the kind of person I go after what I want to do now. And I don't think too much about whether I feel like it tomorrow. When I started my YouTube channel, I wanted to do it then. I had only one content in mind. One content. I didn't know what the next video was going to be. I just did that one content. And after that, I had inspiration for another content. Inspiration for another content. When I started my podcast, trust me, I just wanted to record something for podcast. I, I, I have no idea about what whether I'll be doing in 20 years. Later. No, no, I don't have that. I, I don't. I don't think that way. I just commit myself to what I want to do now. Like right now, I'm very into. I, I, I'm loving that um, AI space, creating AI art. I love it. I'm loving it now, but, but it's not like where I want to. I want to. I want to build a career. I mean, no, I love it now. When I wake up tomorrow morning, I'll see whether I'll still love it. But I respect myself enough to stop doing things when I don't love it anymore. I respect myself enough to stop doing things. So when I, but at the point I was doing um, web design, I stopped liking it. I stopped it. You understand? I was doing um, 3D animation. I stopped it after a while. You understand? When I when I stopped loving something, that's the end. For me, that's the end. I move on to the next thing. So I I, I never compromise my uh, my passion level for something. And, my, and at the same time, I never um, overextend my passion level too to say I want to be doing this thing for till I'm 80 years old. No, 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 no. no. I only know about today, right now. So for me, that's how it has been for doing graphic design. Um, I knew I loved to draw when I was very small. I knew I loved to draw. That was, that was just me. You understand? From very early on, that was my passion for drawing. And I used to do it. So when I left secondary school and I left university, I was I didn't know what to do with my life. And then I had to go back and think, what are the things you ever loved before? And the only thing I could think about was drawing. I loved drawing. And I just said, okay, how can I start drawing now? What what is the modern day equivalent of drawing now? And that's how I found graphic design. It was just more interesting to me because it was drawing on steroids. In the fact that drawing was pencil on paper, graphic design was on computer, and you could use lots of colors. Just like right now, I realized that AI is the future of design. So when I look at it, I'm like, oh man, you can create anything just by prompting it. That's what I want to do. You understand? Um, I enjoy teaching. I enjoy speaking. If I don't like it, I won't do it. Look, and that's why when, when you sent me to talk on your, on your platform today, I wanted to do it. If I didn't want to do it, I'd have told you I don't want to do it. I've told people that before. I don't like this for topic. I'll tell you, I don't like your topic. If I don't feel passionate about it, I won't do it. And, I, I, and, and that's, that's how I keep feeling what I'm doing. Because I check my gauge every single day, just like those of you that drive. Every, every single morning, you must check your water in your radiator and check your oil. So every day, I check my water in my radiator on whether my graphic design radiator is this still water there. Okay, I still want to do it. I check the oil too, my creativity, my creativity oil. oil. I still want to do it. I drive it today. I don't want to do it again. That that will be the end of it. I won't. I won't have any holds back about not doing it. And that's how that's, that's the way I've been able to stay. So I don't stay by constraint. I stay by my own decision every day. It's not constrained at all. I hope that helps you answer the that answer the question. Really. Yes, I do. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Hello, sir. I have a question. All right, go ahead. Yeah, um, thank you for the lecture, sir. And uh, sir, my question is, how can one join your mentorship class? Okay, my mentorship um, club is a club, actually. Um, it's a paid mentorship club. Um, so if, if you're interested in joining, I think um, Anthony has my number. You can share it with, um, you can share it in the, 
in the chat section for those that and you can you can message me on whatsapp let me message me on whatsapp i'll let you know what it takes to join um so to that stage but at the same time i still have my my um, telegram group for those that might not have the funds to join my mentoring club come to my telegram group where people ask questions as much as i have time i answer people's questions there ib is a member of my telegram group um, so if you if you want to join telegram group join the telegram group and ask questions there if you feel like you don't have the money for, for the mentoring club the only difference is that the mentoring club i do one-on-one -on -one sessions with people one-on-one -on -one, so i follow them much more closely you understand that the telegram group where i answer the questions generally my telegram my mentoring club is one-on-one -on -one where i'm able to talk to you about your career about your decisions and able to look at your work personally um i don't have that time for everybody you understand so when some people who have sent me their work and their work has been, since last year i've not looked at it not because i don't want to look at it but because my time is very very precious, you understand. I don't have the doctor of time to get everybody so that's why I now have that mentoring group to be able to do one on one session with people. So if you're interested, um let me see. If I can add my I'll try to add my tell you my WhatsApp link in the in the chat session right now. You can chat me up afterwards and I'll let you know how you can be part of it. Anyone that is part of my, my Telegram group, please just join. Uh, please just send the link. If you have the link, you can send it. Um, I'll see if I can send it. If, if IB has it, you can send it. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's any other person that is part of it here. All right. Thanks, IB. All right. Any other person? All right, blessings. Okay, so oh, my question is what, what's your name actually? Gospel. Your name is Gospel. Yes. Ah, so you your real name is Blessed Gospel. Yes. Alright, that's incredible. Alright, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, Gospel. Okay, sir. So my question is, is your design academy as same as your mentorship class? No, 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 they're, they're different. Um, my design academy is, um, is a three month program. My mentorship is, a, is I, I call it a lifetime mentoring. So it's a one time payment for lifetime mentorship. So people have been part of it for about four years now, some two years. But the design academy, I teach you about logo design. So we talk about logo design. It has 12 classes. I teach you how to think about logo, logo design, how to yourself critique, how to be able to talk about your branding, you understand, to understand the principles of design. So that that is actually it's, it's a training. Um, there's one ongoing right now um, that just started. But anyway, I want to join. That one just that we had only one class, all the classes are recorded. So we just had the introductory class. We meet every Monday. Um, I'll, I'll send a link to that also to the to the chat section if you are interested in that. But there, there are two different things: the mentoring and the um, academic. So there are three. Okay, I'll put it this way: there are. There are almost like four services I give. Um, there's the mentoring, which is paid. The academy, which is also paid. Um, then there's the telegram group, where I answer design related questions, which is free. I have my podcast, free to listen to. Um, I have my YouTube channel, but I'm, I'm not updating as much as I should. I'm talking more on my podcast. Um, but those are the, those are the ways in which you can connect with me if you are interested in connecting with me. Okay, sir. So the number is written on your WhatsApp number, right? Yeah, that's my that's my WhatsApp number. Okay, sir. 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 In being a part of that, I think I still have that. It's called PME if you're interested. 
Jesus. All right, thanks. Gospel. Thank you. Another question. Does anybody have another question? I'm, I'm just trying to look for my Spotify page to send my um, podcast for those that want to listen. I, I, I advise a lot of people to listen to this podcast because I think you'll get a lot of clarity from the world. Um, so I'm not going to try to share that with you guys right now. So do we have another question before before we have, we have to go? Because Anthony, I think I'm done with my end here. Um, if you if you do, if you feel you have questions, you want to ask me personally, contact me on WhatsApp. If you want to ask questions on the Telegram group, I advise you guys to even join the Telegram group because then you can go through all the past um, interactions we've had. People have asked very incredible questions on that and i tell people you join the telegram group just to listen to all the audio and you get a lot of value from if you are a designer it will really help you as a designer um because people ask really good questions there um but if you have personal questions for me whether i'm joining my mentoring club or about um joining the design academy um you can, you can contact me on whatsapp um, I think that's the easiest way to be true. All right, so, so guys, thank you very much for having me here tonight. It's been good talking to everyone. Um, thanks, Blessed Gospel. Thanks, Mamu. Thanks, ID. Good to see you here too. Equity, um, thanks very much. And um, Joy, thank you. I can't see the other name, sorry. Well, thanks everyone for having me. Uh, thank you very much, sir. It was really an insightful one. Thank you so much, sir. It was a privilege having you. Um, just want to say big thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. Thank you for. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Okay, so we're wrapping it up here to tonight, and then tomorrow we start again by eight. I hope this was. Very, I hope you. I hope this was worth it, yeah. Because I know it was. So, yeah. Let's meet. In the